However, referrals can be given if you have built the right relationship. And they can be given to you for free. Whereas leads will cost you. But you can get referrals given to you for free if you build the right relationship. So let me begin by asking the question. What's the best definition of a lead that you have found? What is a lead? Name and a phone number. A name and a phone number. So if I write a phone number here and a name, and I give that to Charlie, now Charlie, I have a referral for you, and all you see there is a name and a number, and you say to me, you ask me, so um, are they looking for to buy a franchise or a business and I say to you I don't know, I haven't spoken to them in a while but I know they have money when you call them, tell them that Clement gave you that name and number let me ask you, is that a referral? no, that's not a referral so the question to ask then is what should Charlie do? when he asks me and that's the first thing that all of us should do if we want to increase the level of referrals that we are giving is we have to begin to qualify referrals here's what I find, I find that sometimes people in the course of the year will receive 20 referrals for example and they will close 2 of them or even 5 of them if your closing ratio is that low on referrals that you are receiving, it means you are not qualifying your referrals. It means you are not taking time to train the people who are giving you referrals. I love to say when somebody gives me a referral, even if it's a bad referral, I always start by thanking them for thinking of me and my business. Because I have found that if somebody is willing to at least reach out and bring something to you, there is a, a measure of willingness on their part to assist you. But they still need to be trained so that they can bring you qualified referrals. If you allow people to continue to give you bad referrals or leads that they are passing as referrals and you are not saying anything about it, then you are the one that is not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Let me suggest, however, that you do it in a way that continues to build relationship, and that also retains your credibility. If I receive a, 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 a referral and it's not a referral, I don't take the referral and throw it in someone's face. You call this a referral? I'm going to tell the VP about it. And say, <laughs> I want to make sure that I still maintain the relationship that I have with that person and I qualify the referral. A simple question, right? Shelley, thank you for thinking of me. Do you have a little bit of time? I wanted to ask you a few questions about this referral. And then begin to ask them questions. What do you think would be good questions to ask when you have received the referral? As you seek to qualify the referral, what are some of the questions that you should ask? Have you contacted the person? Yes! Have you contacted the person? What if they say, no, but they know me? What do you say? Can you please follow them? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't I give you a call on Tuesday or Wednesday next week? And, um, and then we can talk. And if you have talked to them by that time, and they still want me to give them a call, then I'll go ahead and give them a call. And by the way, when you talk to them, can you ask these questions for me? Isn't that what we do when we are giving our keynote presentation? We are training our sales force. We are asking them to help us to get qualified referrals. Make sure that the people know the questions to ask. If you tell somebody to call the people before you call them and they still refuse, that's not a referral. That's a lead. You have to make a decision at that time whether you want to accept the lead or not. Because remember, what you do 
you are in effect training the people as to the type of referrals that they should be bringing to you. Here's a thing that we should do that can really increase our closing ratio and our referrals. Laura Dorman um, closes about 98% of our referrals. What she says is this, not only does she qualify the referrals when she gets them, let's assume again, let's say Charlie gives me a referral. I go meet with that person and it was a good referral, he was qualified, he had, you know, he had asked the right questions. They knew I was going to call, they knew what my services and products are. What should I do after I finish dealing with that referral? Yeah, I need to call Charlie back and tell him how things went with the referral. Whether I close the deal or not, here's what I see. Most BNN members only call the person back to complain. They never call to say, I met with the person, it was a good referral, but I did not quite close it. Here is what I think they are struggling with. And then say something like, maybe you can help me close them for me. Because Charlie has a relationship with that individual that I don't have. I can't tell you how many times I give a referral, the person doesn't close it. They call me and they tell me, you know, I think they're interested, but they're just on the fence. And I call the person because it's my friend, you know. And I'll just go and say, hey, Moffat, hey, I, I hate so and so. You met with him? Yeah. Now, what's this I hear you didn't close the deal? You told me you wanted that to come on, don't be wish okay? I'll call you tomorrow. If you haven't closed the deal, I'm coming after you. <laughs> and we'll laugh about it because we're friends. Buying decisions, sales decisions, are emotion decisions. That is why if I go back to Charlie and I seek his help, you can begin to see your closing ratio go significantly higher. Dr. Meisner writes about this and says if you're not updating your referral givers about how the referrals are going, you're missing on opportunities to make sure that you literally close all your referrals. If they are qualified properly at the beginning, if you're following up with the person that gave you the referral, then you know what's going on. Your closing ratio will go up significantly. If you give a referral, because BNI is not just about giving referrals, it's about giving and receiving referrals. Let's say I give Kenny a referral. I need to go back to him a couple of weeks later and say something on the lines of, hey, can you have time by the way to just ask you questions about that referral that I give? When he needs to talk, here are some of the questions I should ask him. Hey, Kenny, is that the type of referral that you're looking for? I want to be trained. I don't want to be giving referrals that are not helping people make money. At the end of the day, this is the number that counts. We know that the one-to-ones help us to receive referrals. But at the end of the day, if we don't put money in our pocket, then the one-to-ones we are having, they can't help us pay the mortgage, can they? Or the car not. It's the money that comes into our bank accounts. Therefore, I want to make sure that I'm also giving good referrals. So I shouldn't be afraid to go back and say, Kenny, is that the type of referral that you're looking for? I'm going to ask you again, Ken, and this time you're going to say no, okay? Kenny, is that the type of referral that you're looking for? Well, I really believe that that's what you need. Don't blame me if you're a bad salesperson, because that's a good referral. <laughs> <coughs> no, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't argue, you know what puts money in your pocket. Nobody else should convince you otherwise. You know what type of clients you need to sit across that are going to put money in your pocket. You are the one that should train us. Therefore, when I hear that that's not the type of referral that he's looking for, I am not unsettled. I come back and I say something along the lines of, Kenya, I appreciate that. I really want to understand and learn how I can give you qualified referrals. Good question for you. 
what should have been different about this referral to really make it the type of referral that you're looking for? I find when you ask that question, most times the difference is very small, but very subtle. But because I ask that question, I can begin to learn. Sometimes it's as simple as, I've heard of subtle differences that were just a difference of 10 years. Somebody's age. If it had been 10 years less, that would have been great. Or 10 years old, that would have been great. Sometimes it's just, if they had this much more, that would have been great. Maybe 25,000 more for us to invest. But because I asked, what about this would have made the type of referral? See, I'm not confrontational, am I? No, I am saying I want to learn. This, if it is done properly, can lead to an increase in this. So this is where it starts from. This is where we start. This, this is a one-to-one -one slip. Never waste one-to-one -one meetings. Make sure that you are probing. You are probing. You are asking questions. Ask, how can I refer you? If you come back and you say, well, just, just let them know what I do. No! <laughs> no! Because then it will say to me, you are really not thinking about your marketing plan. Companies spend millions of dollars putting together a marketing plan. When we sit down in a one-to-one -one and I ask you, how can I refer, how can I bring qualified referrals to you, and your comeback is, well, you know, most people know what, what you know, what consultants do. Then I know you've really not thought about how you're going to make this work. I want to refer you. If you're the mortgage broker, I want to refer you, not the thousands of other mortgage brokers, so you're going to make yourself stand out. If you're the insurance person, then you got to tell me what makes you unique. Because there are thousands of insurance people. Make the one-to-ones very effective. And it will lead to qualified this. How many referrals have we passed since October? Sorry? 211. 211. If our closing ratio is even at 50%, that means we should have closed 205. If we are qualifying referrals, we should see that go up to at least 80%. At 80% means we'll be closing at least, we should have closed at least 160 referrals. The numbers could be different. And sometimes it's not so much about getting more referrals, it's raising your closing ratio. Now let's talk about visitors. By the way, any questions about referrals? There'll be no questions. Let's talk about visitors. The two ways you can give back to your chapter. We've already talked about the first one. You bring qualified referrals to your chapter. The second way you can give back to your chapter is to bring qualified referral, qualified visitors. Why are visitors important to me and I? Sorry? Okay, the future. So they can join. What else? They bring energy. They bring in energy. Exactly, they bring energy. You notice? There's always something about having visitors in the room. Whether it's at your house, when you're meeting. We're all of a sudden at our, worst, at our best behavior. When nobody's there, I just, you know. <laughs> yes, why? Any other reason? Visitors buy, too. Visitors buy, that's right. Visitors buy. Actually, the average visitor to a BNI meeting spends an average of $1,000. $1,000. But they got to be qualified. So let me ask you, who are some good visitors to Advice to be The categories that we have. Sorry? The categories that we That's have. That's right, oh, categories, oh. yes. Who else? Business owners. Business owners who are not members of BNI, yes. People that are looking to expand their business. People looking to expand their business. Housewives. Who else? <laughs> who? Housewives. Housewives, they're really good. Why? Why are housewives? They, they buy. They see the other side. 
They come to a BNI meeting, somebody at home promises them to do things 10 years ago and hasn't done them. And they come to the BNI meeting and they see a plumber, they see a painter, they see a roofer, they see a flooring guy, they see a kitchen guy, they see a stager, and they get excited. They're like a kid in a candy store. They go back home and check on that list. And you don't have to do this anymore. I found people to do it. You bring qualified visitors to your chapter and they buy from other BNI members. You're giving back to the BNI. How many visitors have you had since October? 26. If you bring qualified visitors on average, that would be an extra $26,000 in the pockets of the BNI members this chapter. Last year, you brought how many visitors? It was over 100 visitors, wasn't it? About 102. At the average of 1,000, that's over $100,000. Please don't invite visitors to come and join. Because once you tell them that, you invite questions. They need to ask, how much does it cost? What do I have to do? Do I have to go every week? Invite them to come and experience the BNI meeting. When they come, there is a process of application if they want to join. And the membership committee will take care of it. It's not for you to filter them. The membership committee will take care of it. I had a story a few months ago. Jordan Adler is the top money income earner in send out cups. He earns over $200,000 a month. He illustrates this process. He says he went to Best Buy and he wanted to buy a big screen TV. And he, he, he told the sales associate, hey, um, I'm going to spend $750. I want to buy a nice TV. <coughs> Here's what the sales associates said to him, he says. The sales associate with those big smile said to him, Come, let me show you. An hour later, John, uh, Jordan walks out of Best Buy with a TV system costing $7,500. <laughs> he says, the sales associate didn't try to convince me. He showed me. He let me experience what is possible with a surround system. <laughs> when I experienced what was possible, 7,500 seems cheap to me. Let them come and experience the meeting. Don't try and censor them outside. Say to them, well, you're going to pay for, you know, this amount, you're going to pay this amount. Don't do that. They can't attach that value because they haven't experienced the meeting. Invite them to come and experience the meeting. And when they come, they will see what's possible because they're going to see this and they're going to know that they can make money in this chapter. I say, Power Group 100, if we can do those things, bring qualified referrals, bring qualified visitors, there's no reason why this chapter cannot blow through these numbers. You're already on track to blow through 612 as it is. You know, you did this in slightly over three months. So you're already going to blow through these numbers. There's no reason why this can't be a million dollars. Qualified referrals, qualified visitors. Make sure that you're looking through the referrals and just asking the question. When did you last talk to this person? They're expecting my phone call. Excellent. And then, when you meet with that person, go back to the person that gave you the referral. Tell him how things went. If it hasn't closed yet, ask them for help and you'll be amazing.